So the beautiful part about this uh, flay short palazzo pan is the waistband that I added. Okay, this is a unique uh, waistband that recently I just love how it, it looks, right? So besides, this is a tutorial request, so uh, it was requested from my WhatsApp group. So I'm going to be showing you how to draft the pattern, how to cut and sew at the same tutorial, okay? So if this is something that you are interested on, Keep on watching this video to the end and if you're new to my channel you are welcome my name is Jule Rad, and if you're my returning subscribers you are also welcome if you're being on my channel and you're yet to subscribe please subscribe subscribing help encourage me like my content help encourage me to create more content like this okay so let's get starting so now let me introduce to you the fabric you need this is a brighter satin I use a brighter satin a shiny face brighter satin okay so it has two face. So the fabric I would recommend for you for this uh, particular style, use a damax, use a strong uh, crepe, and also you can use Ankara for this tutorial, okay? And how many yards you need? You are going to need about two yards if you're on a smaller size. And if you're on a bigger size, you will need three yards, okay? Depend how long you want it to be. So first thing here on the table, I have my smaller scale pattern paper. I will be drafting with a smaller scale pattern, okay, so that you can see what I'm making. So let's assume you are cutting direct with the fabric. You have your two yard of fabric here, okay, and the length is by 60, right? So by that uh, two yard, that is 72 inches, you are going to fold it into two. So when you fold the 72 inches into two, you are going to have 36 inches. You have 36 inches by 60 inches, okay? So once I'm done folding this, the next thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to be taking, keeping allowance, okay? So the allowances that I'm going to be taking is my round hip circumference divided by 10, which gives me 4 inches, okay? So I'm going to be marking this 4 inches. So this allowance that I'm marking here is going to serve as my crouch extension line, all right? Divide your round hip circumference by 10, whatever thing that gives you, you're going to use that to first of all start your starting point, okay? You're going to mark it just the way you see me doing. So once I'm done marking this, I'm going to connect this line now. So these lines are my guideline, all right? So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to choose this side to be my center back. Here I will mark CB, center back, and CF is center front, okay? So the next thing I will do, I will take my waist circumference to be marking my waist circumference. I will be dividing my, my waist circumference by three and then I'll add two inches, okay? So if you are going to add elastic waistband, then use your hip circumference divided by three and add two inches to that measurement, okay? So, so mine is 11.3 inches, so I'm marking this exactly 11.3 inches, okay? My weight is 28 divided by three is 9.3 plus two inches, which is 11.3, uh, okay? So I will just be marking this 11.3 inches like this until I get to, I get my waist uh, line, okay? Divide your waist circumference if you're going to add zip. Divide your waist circumference, but if you're going to add elastic waistband, then you're going to divide your hip circumference and then you're going to add two inches, okay? So once I'm done now, I'm going to connect this line like you see me doing. So my line is not straight, just pardoning. Okay, I will correct it from my main fabric. So the next thing I will do now is to mark my, my crouch depth. So divide your hip circumference by four. Mark exactly that four inches there, okay? Don't reduce your waistline. And if you want to have that free movement, then you add one inch to that measurement. So... If your hip circumference divided by 4 is 10, then add 1 inch to mark 11. Mine is 11, so I mark 11 inches there, okay? So I mark on the both center front and the center back. And then afterward, I extend this line out. So those lines that I extended are my crouch extension. So from my center back, I will be marking 3 inches upward like this. And also at the center front, I mark 3 inches upward. So that three inches that I mark is going to help me now to create my crouch extension, okay? If you're very good with your free hand, I will advise you to use your free hand to create this curve, okay? But if you're not good with your free hand, then use your uh, French curve ruler 
to create this curve like so. So the next thing we're going to do now, after marking this now, the next thing I will do is to take the length of my pants. So this is the time you're going to determine how long you want your pants to be. My pants length, I want it to be at the end of the day, 21 inches, okay? So I'm going to be marking 21 inches here. I will be extending this line. I will mark 1.5 inch above because my waistband is 1.5 inches. So I'm taking another 1.5 inches there and then I'm marking my 21 inches right here, okay? At this point, if you want your waistband to be 2 inches, then you place your tape 2 inches above and then you mark it. So once I'm done now, to get this nice uh, curve, okay, uh, I took my tape, I brought it up to the starting point, then I'll start marking my pants length. So please just pay attention and see exactly what I'm doing, okay? So place your tape there, just the way you see me doing, okay? Leave your tape there and you're going to take your pants length. So... Now that I'm done, I will use my free hand to connect this dot together. So uh, the next thing I will do here is to extend this line. Okay, I need to extend this line out. And I will do the same thing to the center back as well. So once I'm done, I'm going to uh, minus one inch from my center front. Okay, you remember my allowances was four inches. So I minus uh, one inch from the center front and then to create my front pattern, okay? So after then, I will just add my sewing allo my folding allowance from the hemming part and also from the crouch extension. Remember, I'm adding zip, so you're going to keep allowance for your zip. So the allowances that I kept on my zip is one inch, okay? So that is my zip allowance from the center back, center front, I, I'm dropping my center from my center front, I drop it down with 0 0.75, okay? On my main fabric, I drop it with 0 0.75, okay? So afterward, I added my sewing allowance, 0 0.5 from the center front. And then from my waistline, I added back my sewing allowance to join my waistband to my uh, pants with 0 0.5 inch, okay? And afterward, I will just cut this off. I hope this explanation was clear for you to follow. If finding anything difficult, please don't hesitate to leave your comment below or you can reach me out on the WhatsApp group, okay? So lay all your complaint on the WhatsApp group. I will attend to it. So now that I'm done now, so this is the main fabric, okay? I've already gone ahead to cut it off camera. The same thing I did on my, on my mini pattern, that is the same thing I did for my main fabric, okay? The smaller scale pattern I'm talking about. So I the same thing I did for my fabric. So the next thing I'm going to do here is to start joining the center front. Okay. From the center front, I will be pinning it down. So I forget to say that this pattern does not have a side joining. Okay. You don't need to have a, you don't need to cut it off. So it doesn't have a side joining. The only place that you need to join is the your center back and your center front all right so as you can see i'm pinning it down now to get it ready for sewing so i will go to my sewing machine i will first of all make a a loose stitch okay because zip is going to come to the back so i'm going to mark one inch upward okay did you see that i mark one inch there so i just mark 0 0.5 inch connect it all the way down so this part here that i'm marking up here this is where I'm, I'm going to be making a temporary stitch okay for my zip so when i get to the point where i mark that one inch i will stop stitch and also do the same thing to my center front so i have done join my pattern together or my join my pants together so the next we're going to do now is to work on the that okay you know there is a dart on it so for you to do that please don't follow my instruction because i don't iron it I'm using an inverter line, okay? So that is why I did not iron my pattern. So if you're working with that, please make sure you iron so that you can have the line accurate, okay? So for what I did, I marked my, my bust pan measurement because that is where my dart is going to start from, okay? That is where my dart is going to sit. And afterward, from that point where I marked my dart, half of my dart circumference, 
and then I marked eight inches downward. Okay. Did you see the way my my ruler is placed? It's not is the ruler placed a little bit slantly. Okay. So for you to get accurate line, you need to pin that point where your dart stop so that you can transfer your dart to the other side of your pattern. Okay. Or to the back or to the front. So the same thing I did for the other side here. I'm going to do the same thing here now. I'm going to uh, mark my half of my bust pan measurement. Okay, half of my bust pan measurement is 3.5. So, I, but I use four inches here. So I just mark it there. So the next thing I'm going to do here, I will uh, try to make sure that this line, they are equal. Okay, so you're going to find out how many inches between the side to where that, that stop. So first of all, mark the eight inches right there. And then from that point, you're going to place your tape like that to find out where. So for the other side, mine is seven inches. So the distance between the side to where my dad stop is seven inches. So that is what I just did. Okay. And afterward, I will just connect it like that. So this is the part where my dad is going to be. Please let me know on the comment section if you don't understand. You can rewatch it if you don't understand what I did here. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to transfer this dart to the other side by pinning it, okay? You need to pin it like that. So once if you don't pin like this, then you're going to turn it. It's going to be easy for you to transfer. Before you turn it, make sure you notch this part, okay? Notch from the waistline, notch it so that when you switch to the other side, you know exactly where you're going to connect your dart to. Once I'm done now, I'm going to turn it now so that I can connect my dots or transfer my dot to the other side. So this is the back side, okay? This side is the back side. So as you can see, I'm pulling off the, the pin so that I will get my line accurate. So now I'm going to connect my dot now. So once I'm done, I'm going to take out the pins so that I can be able to work with this proper. So the, the width of my dart is going to be one inch in total. So I'll be marking 0 0.5 inch on both sides. Okay. I'm going to mark 0 0.5 inch on both sides and then I will connect. I will try to connect. So I was trying to work on this because of, I did not iron this fabric. So it was a bit difficult for me to work with, but then again, um, I was able to get hold of it. Okay. And sorry, I thought this uh, chalk is going to come out bold, but unfortunately, I'm seeing it that it's very fenty. But I hope you understand exactly what I'm doing here. Okay. So now that I'm done connecting this dot like this, I will just pick up my, uh, pick it up like this. Okay. And then I will pin it. So when I get back to my sewing machine, it's going to be easy for me to stitch it. So you're going to follow the part where you draw out uh, those lines, okay? Follow this part like that, and then you're going to pin it. So that is exactly what I'm doing here. So once I'm done now, I will head back to my sewing machine and join it, okay? I will do the same thing to the other side. I will also do the same thing there. So I have done join my, my dad. So the next thing I will be working with now is to join my inseam together. Okay. So I'll be joining my front and the back inseam together. By doing this, I'm going to match the, the front and the back together like so. Right side facing the right side. Okay. And then I will pin this. So I will pin that. Once I'm done, I will be heading back to my sewing machine again to join that part. I hope you are getting what I'm doing. So now I will go and join it. So I have done join this. So my weaving machine got spoiled. So I can't fix it at the moment. So that is why you see I'm having a rough stitching inside. Okay, please pardon that side. So the major thing is for you to understand how to make this pant. Okay. So the next thing I'll be working with my waistband. So I have a two pieces of uh, 
fabric here okay so i divide it into two so that i can have a my fabric was not enough so i have to manage the pieces to get at my band okay so if you have enough fabric you can just uh, fold it once and then fix your band but because i don't have that is why i have to join two pieces together to create my band okay and the length of this band is your personal choice okay so like mine is about 72 inches about two years so the next thing i will do first to before i will join my waistband is to fix my zip first okay the first thing you need to do for this tutorial or for this band fix your zip first before you fix the waistband so if you don't know how to fix your a zip to a garment I will be leaving a link on my uh, description box for you to go and watch how to fix it because I made a tutorial for that. Okay, you go and learn how to watch a uh, fix a zip, then you come back here for the tutorial to continue. Okay, so what I'm going to do here first thing before I will place my zip, you know, I need to create a space for my band where I'm going to fix my band. So you, I'm um, going to be marking 0 0.5 inch first. Okay, so from that 0 0.5 inch, that is where my zip is going to start okay so i'll be marking 0 0.5 inch like so and the same thing i'm going to do for the other side too i'm going to mark 0 0.5 inch by this point so this is the point where my zip teeth that zip part it or the end of that zip where the zip uh, protector is that is where i'm going to place my zip from that 0 0.5 inch that i mark okay so this allows that you reduce from up is for you to be able to fix in your band okay i hope you understand this so i'm going to start now by pinning my zip to my pant so that i can go back and fix my zip okay like i said if you don't know how to fix zip check on the link on the description box where i show how you can fix a zip to your uh, garment okay so you can go and watch that before you continue for the next step okay so i'm going to do the same thing to this side you have to pin it down so that you can be able to uh, go, um, stitch it okay you need to pin it so to allow you to fix your zip proper so when you don't fix your zip, this is how it's going to look like, okay? So it's going to look like this. So I will be heading back to my sewing machine now so that I can fix my zip. And then once I'm done that, I will be back for you to see how it looks like. So when I'm stitching, I will be stitching very close to the teeth of the zip, okay? In that way, you're going to have your zip looking very nice and clean. So when you look at it, you think it's an invisible zip. It's not an invisible zip. It's just how close you're going to stitch it okay and also i have gone ahead to hem the lower part so i have fold in the lower part and then stop stitch it so the next thing i will do now is to fix in my waistband i was able to manage to iron the waistband but i was not able to iron the rest of the clothes because um i'm using an inverter light i don't want to exhaust the light if I exhaust all the light, I may not be able to finish the tutorial. So I just manage with the band. So what I'm doing here, find the midpoint of the band and you're going to notch it, okay? So you, you get your short, your short knicker or your pants. Then find the midpoint from the center front, rather. From the center front, I'm going to place my band where I make the notches, okay? I'm going to place it, the right side facing the right side from the center front, i'm starting this pin from my center front okay so find the midpoint of your band and then notch it then get your short knicker or your trouser whatever you're working with find the midpoint and then you're going to pin it there okay so i will be pinning this till i get to the the center back where my zip stop okay so as you can see i did not join the whole of the band together i separated it okay so you need to separate your band, then you're going to pin it, okay? When you fit first of all, uh, stitch the first, uh, it's just like a, a lining. When you stitch the lining, and then you're going to fold in the main uh, fabric to close in the rough stitching. In that way, you should be able to also stitch the band complete, okay? So once I'm done now, I'll go back and stitch here with 0 0.5 inch allowance that I kept, okay? 
so i will be back so i have gone ahead to stitch this down so the next thing i will do now is to uh fold in okay so let me open it so that you see how it is so this is how it's looking like okay so the first thing i'm going to do here i'm also come back to my midpoint okay from the center front rather from that center front arrange it like so okay as you can see i'm zooming in very close so that you can see what i'm doing make sure the the rough stitching or the seam allowance is inside okay so you're going to fold your band like this okay you're going to fold it in if you have iron iron it while you fold okay but if you don't have iron you can still just pin it like this uh, fold it like this and you're going to pin i hope this my explanation is clear for you to follow the instruction if you don't understand it rewatch it or you can leave your comment below let me know the part where you'll get confused but i hope with this explanation if you follow this simple step you should be able to arrive to something like this okay so you're going to fold it i'm going to continue to fold it like this and pin the only way for me to work with this thing freely without iron i have to take my time to pin this all down assuming there is iron i will just fold it and iron it then it will be easy for me to go back to my sewing machine to stage ball because there is no iron i have to continue folding it like this and pin until i get to the end or to the center back before i will head back to the sewing machine to join it so i'm going to repeat this process like this until i get my waistband a pin to my pants or the way i want it to be i hope you enjoy watching this video i hope you are learning something if you do please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and um subscribe to my channel if you're yet to do so subscribe or follow if you're yet to do so and don't forget to turn on your post notification so that you get notified when another tutorial will be dropping okay but for now let's focus on finishing this one right and do me a favor please help me share this video you know by sharing this video, you are helping, encouraging me to continue creating the content for you guys, okay? Yeah. So now that I'm done pinning, I'm almost close to the edge. So I will go back to my sewing machine now and stop stitch it all around, all right? So I'm going to go and do that. And then that will be the end of this tutorial. But before then, so as I'm going to... Uh, stop stitch this i'm also going to fold the band like this so i know you'll be wondering how you're going to achieve the band or how you're going to close down the band so this is the same thing you're going to do okay you're going to fold it and pin and then when you're stitching stop stitching it you will also stop stitch the band as well so i did something to the side when i i, I was done with it i sized it it was not fitted the waist was too loose for me so what i did i pin it i f make sure i got the the side okay like the side by side so what i did i i marked uh, six inches or so, yeah it was seven inches i marked seven inches below uh and then i i hold in by the side like with 0 0.5 inch so the length i use is just like adding extra that to the side okay so the width I took was one one eight, like zero point five inch. That is one one inch that intake that I took from the side, and that is why you see that everything looks so nice and fitted, right? So that is what I did. So other than that, there is nothing else I did. Um, so that is the final result. I hope you learned something from this channel. I hope you enjoy watching this video. If you do, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and uh, help me share this video subscribe to my channel if you're yet to do so and turn on your post notification okay so you will get notified when another tutorial will be dropping i want to say a very big thank you once more for watching you have a good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you're watching this video from and stay tuned for my next tutorial i will see you guys soon